Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lindsay Schiller, and I am the FSU Career Center Liaison to the College of Fine Arts and the College of Music. And I have with me today Sam Sademan, um, who's going to talk to us about music management. Hi, Sam. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks for having me. Hi. Um, so first thing, can you describe Innovo Management, your role there, maybe how you made that company? Tell us about what you do. Yeah, for sure. So I started Innovo Management in 2014. Um, it was started with the idea of putting musicians first. So um, we're a music management company, which for anyone who's unfamiliar with music management, we're essentially the funnel for anything that um, is related to our clients' careers. So whether it's tour opportunities, merchandise opportunities, sponsorships, um, features, labels, whatever it may be, everything funnels through us and we determine what's relevant and valuable. And then we bring that to the client, we work with them. Anything that doesn't isn't worth their time to get stressed over or think about, we just remove from the equation or we handle for them. Um, and it started from a belief um, that I had in personal experiences as an artist. So uh, I'm an immigrant. I moved to America when I was seven years old from London, uh, grew up mostly in New York and, um, and basically fell in love with hip hop music growing up in New York and put, started making music at a young age. Um, and at 17 years old, put out a concept album, signed to a label in Philadelphia, and then um, the money never came. I consulted attorneys and basically um, I was told that the amount it would take and time it would take to chase wouldn't be worth my time basically. Um, and so I realized that I wanted to, I, I didn't want to make music anymore, but I wanted to create a place that put musicians first and, and stop that from happening to other people. Um, and so the idea of Innovo was born and um, I really wanted to focus on being innovative and different from this like structured corporate um, robotic sometimes or machine-like uh, industry. And so Innovo is like from the root Latin word innovare, which is to innovate. Um, and so, yeah, it was born then and um, it's just grown over the years and six and a half years in and about two and a half years doing it full time now because I had full time jobs in the industry doing it as a passion project for a long time. Um, it's grown to now four divisions. We do music management, influencer management, project management, where we're essentially like paid for a la carte marketing services and then hourly consultations where we work with like baby artists to help kind of draw the, the map, uh, whether short term or long term. So been a journey but that's kind of like the intro to what I do and and who we are yeah for like so and just for my students you are based out of Nashville I am correct yes yeah. um just for folks considering you know careers in music would you say that geography has anything to do with it or do you feel like um you could have done this uh company anywhere or is Nashville yeah I think it's tough. I think the music industry is one of those where like there's these defi definite hotbeds like LA, New York, Nashville in some regards. Um, but I think like people with the advent of like how needed technology is in growing careers and growing brands, you can do it anywhere. I think personally, like the value of being in a major city that has a, a big music ecosystem is the value of networking and relationships more than anything. Um, I think Nashville is great. I think LA is great. New York's bit great. Chicago's great. There are other, Miami's great. There, there are a ton of great cities for it. And that's not to say I have friends killing it in Pittsburgh, you know? So you can be anywhere. I think that if you're trying to build your spider web, it's probably pretty advantageous to be in one of those cities though. Great. No, that's definitely good information to know for my students looking at um, kind of starting this trajectory, this path. Um, yeah. But I guess the other thing I really would want to know is kind of when you made, I know we talked about kind of putting this company together, uh, but when did you know that this was for you and what kind of experience confirmed that? Yeah. Um... As corny as it sounds, I so after I stopped making music would have been like 2010 or 11, maybe. Um, I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to do at the time. I knew business was like, I was better at the business side than creating side, um, but I didn't know exactly what that looked like. And so I was doing door-to-door -door sales in the Bronx for a solar panel company. Um, I was doing real estate 
stuff for a, pro a property management company. And then I moved to Atlanta for a bit because uh, my parents had moved down there and I was doing real estate investing for like housing and urban development properties. And then I was um, doing social media mo marketing for mom and pop shops all kinds of stuff. The, the goal at, in that kind of two year period was to just sharpen my general business acumen and just get better at understanding how business works in various ways. So marketing, sales, talking to people, networking, transacting, what have you, uh, legal accounting. And so just getting better at business as a whole. And then as silly as it sounds, I had an aha moment one day where I realized there was a business side to the music industry, which wasn't just built on nepotism. I think like sometimes, you know, the entertainment industry can paint this allure like it's impossible to get into or, you know, you see it in movies and it's like, oh, my dad was a record executive and thus I'm the next record executive. Um, but there are definitely routes through. Um, I think it's one of those industries that you you are known by who you are more so than what you do. Um, of course, what you do keeps you there, but like reputation is everything in this industry. And you see people come out the gates swinging and um, come out a little too hot and sometimes burn bridges too early um, because they're worried about ego and everything else. And, and this industry is filled with that. And so you just have to be careful, uh, work extremely hard and um, treat people right, um, which I'm sure we'll get into a bit more. So I don't want to expand on that too much. But yeah, I mean, it's a, such a small industry. Every day I reconnect, I connect with someone who I have 50 mutual friends with and they have stories about someone and I have similar stories and we're in the same place three years ago at, you know, and that happens like weirdly frequently. Um, and so if you're, if you do right by people, they'll do right by you. That's really great to know in terms of networking for my students, because yeah, I, I would say reputation ego can get in the way of any field. Um, and it's, it's good to know that treating people right is still highly valued in industries. Oh yeah. Would you say for, you know, students in college now, what, did you learn more about kind of business acumen from classes that you took or, you know, the actual real world experience and don't get too much into classes because we might talk about school later. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah, I have an interesting story. Um, I think for me where I grew up in New York, like it was very much like you learn by doing. Um, and so from what far before college, I understood like that the way I learn is by like getting my hands dirty and like understanding by like piecing things together. And so I was never a great student, um, full transparency to everyone watching this. I tried college three different times. I went to Lynn University in Boca Raton, Florida. I went to a community college in New York, and then I ended up at Belmont University in Nashville, um, I tried it three times and I was paying my own way through school and it was really, tr really hard to juggle that and trying to launch my business and everything else. So um, it didn't, it wasn't the right path for me, but I learned by doing um, that's everyone learns differently. I think that um, what college really affords you is the ability to meet people and network um, far before they're in a position where it becomes this like power trip. Um, and so building those spider webs and, being willing to be like the quote unquote submissive when you reach out to um, different industry people and, and like wanting to pick their brain and buy them coffee, like that that serves you as a student versus when you're out of school, uh, you lose that like allure of like, I wanna learn from you. And it just feels more like um, you're just trying to get something from them. So um, I think being a student and, and learning from school is great. I just would say like pair that with actually like spending time going out into the real world and like taking people out to coffee and like learning about the network. Cause the people I saw who, who focused only on school and not building their network came out and then had like a year or two where they were trying to figure it out versus the people who did school focused on school, but also focused on building their network after classes and before classes. Um, those are the people that thrived. Good. Well, I mean, and you can't make those connections with these exclusive folks unless you know somebody who knows somebody. But as you said, you know, nepotism isn't everything, too. 100%. Uh, yeah. So other thing I would want to know, you know, we're, we work in arts fields. So what are the common struggles you would say in pursuing this in particularly? And then are there struggles you want to warn other folks about? Yeah, I think... Um... 
this is going to sound broad, but I think the mental health part of the music industry is something that is only now becoming a super like prevalent discussion point, discussion topic. Um, and I think that's partially because of the pandemic um, and people losing their jobs. But I think um, that it's just super, um, it's super important to like constantly be taking uh, internal stock of where you are mentally, physically, whatever else. Um, and also of like people in the industry and friends, like there's this stigma about mental health and, and this industry is so cutthroat. And so like, it can be judgy and it can be ego driven and it can be clout chasing. And, you know, it, it's the entertainment industry, not all of it's like that, but there are definitely parts like that. And, um, you have to know how much to entertain those stuff and how much not, and as you grow and build with people, um, but it can affect your mental health. When I ran the marketing for a digital distributor named one RPM, which is like a, um, a label services distributor. So like right between like a record label and like a CD baby or tune core where you just put your music and it would send it out to stores. Um, I was working there like eight to six every day, full time. And then I was going straight from there to networking events, concerts, scouting bands, drinks with reps at Spotify, whatever it was. Um, and then you get home at two in the morning and you're back at the office at eight in the morning and, and you do that five days a week and it, it burns you out and it starts to affect your mental health and, and your physical health. And um, if you don't learn to like take care of yourself first, this industry will swallow you whole. Um, so, you know, it took me a long time to do that. And I, I say this uh, here because I want students to understand like value yourself as well. Like, especially when you're starting out, if you go to like a booking agency or one of these bigger companies, you are going to be the bottom fish and your expect their expectations from you are going to be that you put more time in than on paper you're agreeing to. Um, and you're going to be working around the clock and you're going to have to prove yourself and you're competing against other people for promotion. So ultimately you have to work harder than other people, but you also don't want to neglect your mental and physical health. And I, I think that is such an important concept and we go over it a lot in higher education. So, you know, maybe that doesn't always get to the student side as much, like you need to take care of yourself and whatever you're doing. And I think the, the issue from my end that I see a lot, and I did this too, is I would push myself to burn out because I was so passionate about yeah. the industry. But where, where do you find that line is? Like when do you know? Yeah. The line has changed a lot for me over the years. Um, you know, I've been in this industry now like almost a decade and um, it's definitely changed. Like when I first started, I recognized that if I were gonna, if I was gonna get somewhere that was like valuable or leverageable or weaponizable, whatever you wanna call it, I had to work harder than everyone. I had to produce more, I had to be more innovative. And so I was doing hundred plus hour work weeks. I was skipping my soccer games or my workouts or you know I wasn't dating or like eating well or what have you and all I was doing was work I'd get to the office at seven in the morning and I wouldn't leave until it was dark outside and you know and then rinse repeat seven days a week um and you know like I was able to do that then I was young like it's easy to do that at 22 uh to just like work and like get three hours of sleep and work and do that every day. Um, but as you get a little older, like that starts to affect you more and more. And like, you know, I've got like other things in my life that are equally or more important to me now. And, and, you know, my, like, I put on like 40 pounds from starting this company and like, I don't know if I can even talk about this. I like, I started like smoking cigarettes a lot, like a pack a day and um, doing all these things that like weren't great for my health, but like were necessary to get through the day in terms of like what I needed to just like move, move along. And, um, and then like, I just, I realized like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on a train that's not going to like produce long-term success, just short-term and I'm going to burn out and it's going to be bad for all my clients. And it's like fiscally irresponsible to my team for me to be living like this. So um, yeah, I just like nowadays I, I work out seven days a week. I play on a soccer team. I have a long-term girlfriend. I have a puppy. Like, you know, I'm like much more focused on like having a, a work-life balance. And I don't know that you like in the music industry, especially, I don't know that you have that ability, like coming right out of school. I mean, you, you do, but you can end up in a position where it's like so corporate that you get pigeonholed. 
and you're just in this position for the next 15 years, but you have your work-life balance. So it depends what you want out of the industry. You know, you can go work at those companies and make the same salary for 10 years and um, have your work-life balance if that's what you want. Or, you know, you can chase the like moving up the ladder in a fast moving environment and you probably will have to do that. You know, we have projects right now that my team is working far more hours than agreed upon, but it's the, it's the internal belief that if this goes well, it will pay off for everyone. And so that's the only reason they do it. And those are the people I keep around. And that's not to say like that I want them to neglect their mental health or physical health, but they just have to get innovative with how to fit that in on days like that, you know, and they're not all like that. Um, so it is a juggle. Um, I don't, I'm trying to like not be negative, but also like paint a very honest, um, transparent view of the industry, which is like, there are always going to be people working harder than you. There are always going to be people that you're like, feel you're competing with for lack of better term for opportunities. And like, ultimately the more connected, harder working, most innovative will win out every time. And so you just have to find how you can do that and also like treat yourself correctly. I, I think that's really valuable advice and we're all working on work life balance in our lives. So yeah, everyone can relate to that story. Would you say, you know, based on the networking, the school kind of people working harder, getting real life experience, what do students need to do to get started? Like if they watch this and they're, yeah. what is that first step? like okay I'm on board with this yeah I mean I don't know like if assuming I'm talking to a sophomore or a junior first I would say intern um I didn't take internships um and that's my biggest regret to this day um I came right out of school and I had built a network because I'd been running my business and I jumped straight into a like a job at Sony ATV Music Publishing and it was great but I wish I had internships before that um both as a, both as like a resume builder, network builder, but also like experience builder. Um, I learned by doing, but I wish that I had those internships and I think they're invaluable for like providing immediate value when you come out of college for having this like back stock of information. Um, we always joke around, we call it YouTube university, but like YouTube stuff, like learn about publishing, go on YouTube and type in like, what is the music modernization act or like, what is this or what is that? And, and learn about things and listen to podcasts and always be looking to like understand and, and uh, learn, you know, that you never stop learning. I'm almost a decade in, I do some of the same stuff every day in my day to day. And every day I learn a new thing about it because I, I approach it with the uh, mindset of like, this isn't the only way to do it. This is the way that I know how to do it, but there are a million other ways. And if you stay open to it, you learn new things and it might benefit you long-term. So um, being open, wanting to learn, taking internships, um, you utilize the network that you're building to like pick brains, ask how you can support. This is a big one. And I knew we were going to get into it, but, um, you should always be looking to help others before you receive help, especially, I mean, that's, that's just a life code, uh, to follow, but in the music industry, especially there's a ton of people who reach out as you start building your own platform. Um, that, that are just looking for things and you can smell it in the water immediately when they reach out that they're just looking to like use you as a lily pad and take your up and, and move on. And those are the people that don't get very far. Right. And so when you're approaching someone, it should always be, how can I help you? And in turn build rapport. And then maybe that will come back to you. Maybe it won't. It doesn't always. So, I mean, at any point in the industry, like when people, when, students reach out to me if it feels like they're just trying to like pick my brain to get a job I'm usually not gonna like enter take time out of my day to like entertain that but if they like want to get a coffee to like hear my story or like you know I'm super receptive receptive when and when someone reaches out to me and they're like hey I listened to like three podcasts that you were on and like I love this this and this about your story um super insightful. I would love to hear more about this because I also have X, Y, and Z experiences or whatever it may be. Um, if someone took the time to like dig into me and like learn about me and like make this pitch, not feel like a copy paste to a million people, that's where I pay attention. And I take time out of my day because we're, 
we're all extremely busy. And so the expectation should never be there when you're reaching out. But if you do it correctly, then, you know, that that certainly opens more doors. And as you get coffee with people, hopefully they're the kind of people that ask you, like every student I meet with, at the end of my conversation, I say, cool, like, so it sounds like you want to go into X, Y, and Z parts of the music industry, or you don't know yet. Um, are you open to getting coffee with these three people? Mm-hmm. Hopefully they say yes, right? It would only benefit them. And then I connect them to those three people. And then the idea is hopefully those three people share the same sentiment of helping people grow. Um, so if you're, if you're a good person and you do it the right way, that's, that's kind of how I, how I like to focus on building rapport. And I do it to people, you know, who are above me in the industry all day. Um, so I think that's how you kind of build that. And then, you know, going into the career side of that, um, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, my assistant Savannah, um, was an intern of ours. She came on, I can't remember the timeline, maybe a year and a half ago as an intern senior year, I think. Um, and we were about to go on a company retreat about a month into our, um, her internship. And we had an employee leave the company, like right before the trip, like a week before. And I had, we were going to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and we were like we rented a cabin and we were going horseback riding and white water rafting and doing all these things. And I had prepaid for a certain amount of people. So we had a spot. So I just, I opened it up to her and said like, if you want to come, you can totally no worries. Like I know it's only a three month internship. She said, yes, she built amazing relationships with the team. She worked harder than any other intern we've had. Now she is my assistant, assistant manages all my clients and co-heads our influencer division. And she is thriving. And like, the network she's building is invaluable. The knowledge she's gaining, the experience she's gaining is invaluable. And she has a full-time job now, you know? So um, perfect example of someone who did, did the exact right things to get to where she is and it paid off versus like we've had interns who miss shifts all the time, show up late, leave early, don't do the work, don't ask questions and then do it wrong. And um, yeah, you know, Um, so, so I think like, hopefully that kind of helps and explains like I think you just have to be willing to like work hard connect build and like fall on the sword and be like the person who's always trying to learn from others not get from others yeah and I I feel like that definitely goes along with kind of your main themes of this conversation is you know say yes and be respectful to people and to others you know that you set high goals and reputation for yourself so totally I think that's I'm, I'm getting that's your brand and, you know, hopefully Savannah gets to see this and appreciates, you know, that. that yeah. I'll make her watch it. <laughs> there you go. Well, so we talked a little about challenges and kind of the lows of the work that it can be, how to get started. What yeah. would you say your, let's, let's go other way. What would you say your favorite part about it is? Um, favorite part is, is when, you experience a major win with a client on the music talking about on the management side, which is like more my bread and butter than anything we do. Um, it can often be a pretty thankless job in that, like you're in the, you're in the trenches every day and you're just dick, digging muck out all day. And like often that's extremely thankless. And then suddenly something massive happens and that win where like your client is super grateful and it's like all centered around them. But like, you are the catalyst to that happening. Um, and whether you get that, like you get that recognition or not, you like everyone knows it's coming where it's coming from as a team effort. And, um, but just, you shouldn't be moving into management if you're expecting that public recognition. Sometimes it happens. Most of the time you're the guy behind the curtains, you know, moving the needle, so to speak. Um, but yeah, those big wins are always pay off, like, or always make it, make the time that you put in feel, um, worth it you know like we have a hip-hop client named Jonas and um we toured Europe for the second time in January of last year like right before COVID like 14 dates um all over Europe and um we didn't have a European booking agent so I booked it myself which is like no manager should do that but I just was like well we need to do it so I'll just book it took me like five months to build the contacts in like Germany and Norway and Switzerland and all these places and um, built them and built this tour and routed it. And it was like so successful and like his favorite tour of 10 years that he's been on. And, you know, and it's just like, those are the, those are the points where you're like, okay, this is why I do what I do. 
Um, and then from an internal side, when you see your team thrive or like get a huge win that you weren't a part of, or like try something new and succeeded it as an entrepreneur, like that is so rewarding. Um, more than personal successes or personal wins. I'm so, I'm a proponent of like team wins more so than personal wins. So of course the personal wins, we can get into that if you, if you want, but I always try to like highlight every, everything and everyone else before myself, if, if I can. No, I mean, this is, this is your chat. And so my last question was going to be like, what are, what are your final thoughts, your advice? So yeah, this is, this is your soapbox this is your my thesis. Yeah. Um, roll your sleeves up. No work is too low for you, too, too easy for you. Um, no time of the day is not a time to work. If you, like speaking in the music business, like value your, your time and your energy and your mental health and physical health, but like, don't neglect the fact that like you are starting from the beginning point. And there are hundreds of people in every city that are looking for the same jobs as you. Um, every day we get five resumes, right? And like, we just don't have, we're a six person team. We don't have the ability to like review or even like hire 99% of them or more even. So, um, but the people who get through are the ones who like, do put that time in and aren't like pedantic about, oh, like, you know, I, I just hit my 40 hours for the week. So I'm out of here. Like I show up at 8.59 and I leave at 5.01 and that's it. And like, of course, those are, there are days like that, but like, don't lose focus of the bigger picture, which is like, put the time in now and it will pay off long-term. Um, so that, and be a good person. Like don't, people smell through the BS in this industry, like support people, try to help others before you seek to help yourself, um, create win-win relationships. Don't be greedy. Um, super small industry. And the people who do that stuff like are very publicly known and you will burn yourself and your opportunities and your relationships really quickly if that's how you um, operate. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. Um, the music industry is, is an interesting place and there's so many ways that you can go down it. And often I talk to people and they're like, Oh, well, I, like I want to be A and R, and I'm like, okay, what does that mean though? There's there's like a million A and R opportunities. Like A and R traditionally is like record label where you're like looking to sign talent, but like there's A and R for publishers. There's like management scouts. There's all A and R at uh, booking agencies. There's all kinds of stuff like that. So um, yeah, do your research. Look into people. Look into companies. Uh, be a good person and, and work hard. I, I mean, that's great advice and I'm, I'm not too familiar with this industry. So learning, I've learned so much, I think in this conversation, I have things I need to research. Um, but I, I just really appreciate you taking the time and of course. I have a busy schedule, um, no and, worries. you know, for my students, Sam, just let me know, maybe this will inspire hope that he's yeah. going to be at a live performance today. Yes. Tonight. I got to go there in four hours for load in. Um, and last thing I'll say, if anyone here wants to connect with me, ask me any questions, um, you know, whatever I can do to help provided I have the time and, um, it, and you reach out in the proper manner, um, you can connect with me on Instagram. It's just Sam, the manager underscore. Um, there is another Sam, the manager for some reason, but I am Sam, the manager underscore, um, on Instagram. So if you want to connect with me, just shoot me a note on there and I try to reply to all of them. So, um, and then also I had a weekly series called Whiteboard Wednesday. So every Wednesday I was going Instagram live with a different person in the music business talking shop. So everyone from publishers to radio execs to uh, TikTok employees to everything in between. Um, I am no longer doing them for the time being, but they are all saved on my IGTV. I think there's 21 or 22 episodes on there. They're all about an hour with a different industry person. We did a Q&A at the end. So um, lots of nuggets of information on there if, if that interests you. No, I will definitely be sharing that on my LinkedIn as well. And so yeah, if you follow me, that, that's going to be invaluable information, I'm sure. Um, but I just want to say thanks again, Sam. Really appreciate you being here. And yeah. Thanks for helping the next generation. After of course, you. Lindsay. I appreciate you having me and um, it's great to chat and inspire the youth. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Thanks again. Cool. Alrighty. Bye.